It's all stirred up. I know, I want to make sure mine isn't clumped up. It's not bad. I like turmeric though. It's not bad. No? That's not bad. I was kind of scared. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> What's going on everyone? It's RJ and Alex from Backyard Sprouts. And in today's video, we are going to share with you guys how we are making over $2,000 a month selling microgreens in just five months. And that is all coming up next. Alright everybody, so the first way we started making 2k a month was approaching restaurants in the Charlotte area. So right now we have about 10 different restaurants that we are servicing weekly pretty much. And the real key to success for us has been trying to get them to be consistent with what they're ordering. That way we can accurately forecast and plan to make sure we have product. Because as you guys should remember, RJ and I have distinguished ourselves by being <clears throat> grow to order. So basically all of our product is only grown if we have an order already placed for it. That way it's super fresh and it's not sitting in a fridge waiting to be sold and it's sold five days after it's mm -hmm. been cut. Mm -hmm. All right, so besides trying to get them to forecast accuracy, another key for us has been keeping up good relationships with our chefs. Mm -hmm. So. As you guys should have watched our video on the sunflower issues, you all know that it was a miserable crop for us the past few months. So we've been really upfront and honest with the chefs on what to expect and how our product's looking and if it's going to be available for them. And that has made a big difference in how uh, they believe we treat them and just has helped our relationships stay really solid. Another thing we've done is we make sure that we are consistent with the quality. So that means if we have to add a little um, what are they called that soak up the water? Oh, moisture pads? Yeah, moisture <clears throat> pads that go into the top of these containers. If the some of the product that's really dense tends to have a little bit of water, make sure everything is just quality checked. RJ and I are really big on quality. Make sure it's flavorful and it's just packed, looks beautiful. And that has helped us keep our um, relationship strong with the restaurants as well. Another thing we've done is we've been really careful with our product and our packaging, right? So you guys have seen our video, we've upgraded the packaging. RJ's been working on some awesome labels. We might even have some colored labels coming out in the future. <laughs> but these have all been really good. Um, the you know packaging is completely compostable and the restaurants really like that. And they love getting to work with us locally. Which adds me to my next topic, which is that we got CNG certified. You want to tell them about that? Yeah, so this was super interesting because we were super scared yeah. <clears throat> that we would get denied. I don't know why, maybe because it's new, but I, I always feel like when someone's about to come over to your house and inspect mm -hmm. you, I'm just like, oh my god, what can they find that they're just going to be like, nope, denied, right? So we started the CNG mm -hmm. certification, and it took us, how long do you think it took us? From start to, a few months. Two months, maybe. Yeah, about two months from yeah. start to finish from the a actual application. Filling out the application was pretty seamless. You know, it's pretty straightforward with the questions. And then once you filled out the questions, they have someone review and they pretty much approve you via email. They're like, okay, yeah, we'll approve you. It's like a temporary approval yeah. until they do the inspection. So once you get the temporary approval, uh, they send you a bunch of packets and information on, you know, what you need to do just to maintain your status with CNG. Yeah. And then it's on us to schedule a inspection with a local farm. If you guys aren't familiar with CNG, it's it stands for Certified Natural Growers, and it is led by farmers and it's pretty small much farmers. run by farmers. Yeah. And that's what we love. And and they're really against, you know, if, if you guys are aware. If you're in this industry or if you're looking to go into this industry, organic certification is hella expensive. A racket. It's yeah. was it five or six thousand dollars? Yeah, it was more than that, yeah. More than that. To have their organic certification label on there. What's nice about C and G is it's what, two hundred, two hundred and fifty dollars? Yeah. Something like that. And they'll even work with you if you can't come up with that. And their beliefs is just simply anti uh, conglomerate you know this is run by farmers and it's for farmers which is something we can totally get behind and so we finally scheduled mm -hmm. our inspection and that went 
fairly smoothly. You yeah. want to talk about that one? Yes, yeah, so Honey Tree Farm in North Carolina is the group that came out and inspected us. And they have an awesome YouTube channel where they show um, yeah, all the yeah crops that they're growing. They're really big. If you are a big fan of Curtis Farm, he grows just like Curtis, only he's here in North Carolina, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. But he came out and he inspected us. He gave us a ton of tips. So it was really great to meet with someone who is already, he's almost making six figures, I believe, already in his farm. And he's only been doing it for a year or two. So really interesting guy and obviously very successful so and it was cool because he also grows some microgreens but it wasn't like oh you're a competitor like we're you know we can't be friends we can't mutually help each other so that was really neat but yeah it was really seamless you know we went through he had a huge checklist obviously of uh, requirements that we had to meet and one thing I will mention is it was much easier for us to get approved because from the beginning we were very careful about being organic and being mm -hmm. natural yep. So if you're someone who already is not being careful or you haven't been really strict with that criteria, it might take you just a little bit longer to reach that level, but you should be able to do it pretty seamlessly. Just go on, they have all of their requirements online. Yep, and literally we use organic <laughs> soil and water. Yeah. So it was very easy for yeah. us. So the next really cool topic we have is farmer's markets because mm -hmm. that is the other way we have been bringing in income. So our farmer's market is small. <laughs> it is. It's a very small farmer's market. I'm talking um, yeah. a, a handful of vendors because it's a growing farmer's market. Uh, and so we're, we're there representing the local community and we are starting to pick up some, some vendors and people are, mm -hmm. the local community is starting to pick up. Yeah. So it's starting to pick up traction. But even from that small community, we are pulling in anywhere between 100 to 150 dollars a week with that and that is a very small i'm talking niche yeah. of people we can sell definitely if this picks up we can see we can easily forecast on well over 200 uh, i think farmer's market. close to five yeah. yeah so one thing to mention um <laughs> we sell out pretty frequently at the market yeah we try to not take an overabundance of products it's usually we just grow a little bit extra than we do for our restaurants so we have it for the market we tend to know which crops are pretty much big uh tend to be like your radish your spicy salads your sunflowers the peas Broccoli's on its way yeah up. so there's a <clears> few <throat> that people really enjoy there but one thing to notice about that is we do only make 100 to 150 dollars right now yeah arjun and i are both there slaving at that farmer's market every saturday so when you think about your hourly rate compared to what you're making in a corporate world it is a lot lower currently it is and a lot it does lower. <laughs> kill us a little bit <laughs> yeah but but we we were very very yeah. well aware that this isn't really going to be our main cash crop right yeah. we're doing it so that we can get some face time with the local community to set ourselves up for the second phase of our business which is home deliveries mm -hmm. and we are building an awesome awesome uh, relationship with that community because we have a sign up form that is filled now from front to back of people interested in our next phase, which is home deliveries. Yeah. So I'm so excited that for one. that. Well, what are our main steps here going into this? We have to update our website because currently our website does not support yeah. our home delivery program. So I'm just giving you tips, right? Because these are all things <laughs> that if you're sitting there going, how do I expand, right? This is what we're currently going through. So RJ is obviously our IT professor. <laughs> So I've been kind of letting him do the research on that and just saying like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so Alex and I are building the infrastructure currently yeah. for the home deliveries. And our current website host is Wix, which is, that they've been good. They've been doing what we need them to do, which is host our website at www.backyardsprouts.com. But since we are starting to go into the home delivery world, we're needing a place that can obviously, people can order online. So we need to convert it to an e-commerce store. And so that changes things from a perspective of how we upgrade it. Do we just upgrade it within Wix or do we go with someone else? And there are a bunch of other businesses out there that have really competitive rates and are very highly rated like Shopify or yeah. um, we're even looking at Square, yeah. Square uh, online market now. And the only reason we are kind of leaning to switching with other places because we just want to integrate and make it seamless for us, right? We don't want to have Square Online over here and then we have Wix website that if you click on our store there, it leads right. to Square or leads to Shopify. So um, there's a bunch of infrastructure work that Alex and I need to do and take care of, but we are building that slowly. Yeah, the challenge for me has been more, I come from operations background, kind of thinking about the logistics and making sure our drain aren't driving all over to deliver, you know, we'll have to set like a minimum delivery quantity and 
we're working through it, but we're really excited for that. And we're hoping that that pushes us to our goal income, which is $5,000 by March 2020, which is what, five months away, six months? It's coming, it's coming yeah. fast, it's coming fast. But we've already broken the 2,000 within five months. Yeah. So, and, and you know, we need to mm -hmm. emphasize that we have been doing all this with full-time jobs yeah. so it is doable so we want to make sure that we can encourage you guys if you guys are looking into going into this that it is doable you don't have to quit your job yeah. just yet right mm -hmm. alex is working her full-time job i'm working my full-time job and we're making it work we're doing the deliveries we're meeting with yeah. the chefs we're meeting with the restaurants we're doing the farmers markets now obviously we are almost pretty much living double lives here and you know it's what yeah. needs to be done but we are passionate about it it's not like it's extra work for us it's something that we want to do but just know that it is doable. Right now we are doing 2,000, over 2,000 a month in, in gross sales with full-time jobs, so. Uh, who's the guy, Sean, you love? Sean Cannell yeah. from Think Media. I just watched a video on him and I feel like he really stresses this point, right? So yes, we do this with full-time jobs, we've been successful with it and it's been a lot of work and we're obviously really excited and we're still very passionate. But as RJ said, it is a commitment, right? So we do give up other things. We're not necessarily always out partying and drinking on the weekends. We have to dedicate other free time to make sure we stay in shape and we're healthy and taking care of ourselves, both physically and mentally, yeah. because it can get very draining when you're working these 80 plus hour weeks, <clears throat> you know, 40 plus in corporate and then 20 to 40 plus on your own time and having yep. to research and come home and do different things. So clean trays, grow, uh, harvest, package, yeah. get ready. I mean, every Saturday morning we're Alex yep. and I are up by 6 a.m. getting ready for the farmer's markets, right? Yep. So, you know, we are doing the sacrificing, but it's worth it. And we're hoping we can keep riding those gains forward. Yeah. So. Well, we hope you guys really enjoyed that video. And if you have any questions, definitely drop them in the comments below because we're trying to be very transparent with how we reached our goals. You know, we learned a lot of what we're doing off YouTube and from other awesome entrepreneurs who posted that content out there. So we're trying to just give back and pay that back to the community. And we want to see you guys be successful with whatever adventures you're going on. Yep, absolutely. As always, Alex and I are trying to build that community of like minds, so we would absolutely love it if you guys hit that like and subscribe button so you guys get the latest on our urban farming adventure, and we will see you guys next time. So, uh, hit that like and subscribe button below, and we will hopefully see you guys next time. <laughs> Negative. We're going to do that one again. <laughs> I'm going to edit the f*** out of that. <laughs>